What's up, everybody? Welcome back to IT Security Labs. Today, we're going to be going back to a Linux machine. It's been a while on this channel since we tried to exploit a Linux machine. And I just found out that there's a new platform called Vaughn X or Vaughn YX. I have not used this platform, but it reminds me so much of Vaughn Hub back in the day when we first started before Vaughn Hub was purchased. And now there is no new machines. In this case, we do have brand new machines from Vaughn X. And I picked a basic one. There's a machine called Basic. And then if you like it, you can download either for VirtualBox or VMware, which is really good. And it, it, it will tell you whether it's an easy machine or not. This machine was created by the MOV, MOW creator. And the difficulty is very low. So we should spend mo no more than 15 minutes on this machine. Let's get started. I downloaded it by clicking down here. You click this download button it will download the virtual machine for you. And once you download the virtual machine, import it in VirtualBox, and I have it running here in my VirtualBox. You notice that I powered off my game of active directory because I don't want it to take too many resources. And now that it's downloaded, the only thing that I have is I'm monitoring network traffic to and from this virtual machine in my security onion. So I'm not sure if we'll catch anything, but security onion is running. It's kind of complaining about whatever um the nodes here but looking at the services they're all running so we are sniffing network traffic and we have a linux machine that's running so next we just go to our kali attacker machine and see if we can get that machine going okay first i i will go to my machines folder i created a folder for that new platform now and i have a folder for the basic machine okay so let's go to basic and in here, you notice that I already have a full scan results because I didn't know how long these results were going to take. But first, we run an NMAP scan against the service. This is Network Mapper. It's supposed to go and find out what services are actually running on the machine. And I'm using SV and SC to find default scripts. And I'm also using T4 and scanning all, f all ports. That's what this P PP here. And then I'm saving the results to a full scan file and also i'm scanning this ip address seeing everything in real time with the boss so right away if, if you run this i'm running it right now in real time you notice that i have 22 open 80 and that one knowing that this is a ctf when 80 is always open you always go and visit port 80 to see what's what's going on there and these results actually are very quick anyway so i'll go to port 80 it's a default Apache machine. So with this one, I just want GoBuster. So I would probably use GoBuster against this site. Again, this is very loud CTF stuff. We're not trying to be stealth or anything here. So I'll use, reuse some GoBuster from a while ago using medium.txt, but I'll repoint to this IP address. And GoBuster will reach out to this URL and enumerate subdirectories for me. And while it's doing that, I'll come back to my results, which just finished right now. And you notice that we have port 22, which is fine. Usually 22, uh, I, I don't touch it un until I get desperate. And then port 80, which we are interrogating right now. Then we also have port 631, which is CAPS. This is a printer, CAPS 2.3. I don't know if there's vulnerabilities for that, but we can do something like this and put that port there. See if we can reach the printer. Yes, we can. So with this one, I'm looking for any password that's, uh, that are set up or any users that this might expose uh, under printers. Dimitri printer. So this is an exposure for the username. Dimitri is a user in this case. So let's check. Dimitri's printer. Yeah, we don't see anything other than it's an Epson printer and here's the socket for the printer. It's listening on local host. So we have a username of Dimitri. We'll probably save that in our notes saying we found a username. Now we have something to work with. Our jobs, help, nothing, nothing. One more thing before we move on from this is we notice that we have a CAPS version. Maybe since this is a CTF, this could be as simple as 
go find out what the exploits are, if they are any. Caps 2.3 and below, remote code execution. All right, it looks like there is an exploit for Caps. This is from 2017, but it's 2.0.3. Make sure our version, oh, this is 2.3. I thought I was getting lucky here. Okay, that won't work. This is way, way uh, above that. Okay, then we can check our Hydra. See if Hydra saw anything. This thing is not talking. Yeah, Hydra did not see anything. Okay. While we take a break, let's take our, our intrusion detection system. Did we detect anything here? I didn't think so. All right, I don't, I don't think this thing is working today. Whatever it is, I, I just had to rebuild some uh, stuff in here. So we did not catch anything on the network, or maybe we did. I'm not, just not seeing it. It's indexing slowly. Uh, whatever is happening there, we are getting to a point where we only have two ports. I mean, three ports. The three ports are not talking. So we do what we don't normally do. It's supposed to be a super easy machine. So because of that, let's brute force using Hydra. We just brute force SSH now that we have a user. We have Dimitri. So the syntax that I have is Hydra. Here is a user. Please use the password from Roku.txt. <laughs> Nasty, nasty idea, but hey, CTF here. We're just practicing. And this again should make for a fun security onion alerts since we are actually brute forcing. So if this thing was working correctly, we'll be seeing a lot of traffic here. Okay, it looks like I have a, I have a um, typo here. This is not how they spelled Dimitri. So let's stop my Hydra if I can. I need to fix this because I'm brute forcing a user that doesn't exist. So it's Dimitri like that. All right. All right. So after a little bit, as you can see here, our SSH does find a password. So it's Dimitri and password is me, me, me. Again, this is just a CTFs. I tried. I spent so much time here. I was like, wait, I'm missing something. It's an easy machine. I should not be stressing. So brute force it was. So now that we know that the password is like that, we can SSH at 192.168.38.242. Ah, yes. Me, me, me. We're in. So since it's an easy machine, what I like to do is uh, sudo dash L and it looks like we can't do anything as sudo. So next is let's look for SUIDs. I think it was like OSCP, SID, and um, I don't want to put the whole lean piece here. I just want something quick. Come on, find SCID. Oh, come on, there's a whole script. Nah, I don't want that. Fine, I'll grab the whole script. Which Python? Oh, you got Python 3? Good. I know. Let's go to temp. SUID.py. Good for the defenders. Okay, let's do that. So we're looking for SUID. All right, so it looks like we found one. Please try the commands below. So we found the SUID for ENV. So this script is actually nice, but it then goes to GTF4 bins for us and gives us a full command to run to get root. So it made it way easier, but you could have run the find command and look for specific SUID bits set, and we found it. Uh, ID. Okay, we are root, cd such root, uh, ls cat root dot text, and then we can also go to home Dimitri and user dot text. All right, kind of underwhelming at the same time. I hope you learned something here. I was hoping for a more interesting machine when I first picked this one, but we had to brute force and we found SUIDs, specifically 
by accident, I found a script that I've never used before for enumerating SYDs. So SYD enum.py, good script, mostly because it will tell you if the, any common SYDs are there and it will give you a command on how to exploit them. So thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you next time.